In this video, we're going to discuss how to troubleshoot Windows WMI discovery failures. All right, so what's the problem? You've scanned a Windows server and it failed with an error in WMI. How can you test the WMI connection from a Windows proxy to the target host? A little background on this. Uh, discovery uses WMI as its primary method of getting data from Windows servers. So if a Windows scan fails or does not provide the expected data, there are some steps you can take to diagnose what the problem is. And here are some of these steps. The first thing you would probably want to do is verify the account that's being used for the scan has enough permissions to do a complete discovery. In general, when doing WMI discovery, you need an administrator level account to get complete data. So if the scan is using a credential proxy, the credential that is specified in discovery needs to have local administrator rights on the target server. If it's an Active Directory proxy being used, then the proxy service should be running as a domain account that has local administrator rights, as well as the logon as user right on the target server. We've got some documentation mentioned here that talks about Windows proxy permissions specifically and basically shows some of the methods that will not work correctly if you don't have administrator access. The second thing you can do is run a credential test from the Discovery UI. And if the test fails, one thing you might want to do is simply confirm the password by checking the set, set password box in the credential and retyping it. You might think you're sure what the password is, but this is a good way to double check. Uh, the third thing you can do, and, and this is a very common problem, and people aren't aware of it always, is the, the actual appliance, the discovery appliance, does an initial scan of port 135 on the target to see if that port is open. The intent of doing that is to find out if the endpoint is actually a Windows host. So if that port is open, if it can be reached from the appliance, then Discovery turns control over to the Windows proxy for more processing. But if the port is blocked, uh, the appliance does not know that it's a Windows server and no Windows Discovery will be attempted. And an easy way to test this is to open a command line on the Discovery appliance and try to telnet to the target on port 135. If you get a response, you know you can get to the port. Otherwise, there's probably a firewall in the way. Another thing you can do to check for failures is look for firewalls between the proxy and the target and verify that the required ports are open. Windows Discovery requires more than just port 135. There are other ports, for instance, a range of DCOM ports that need to be open to do discovery. Uh, please see the documentation referenced here for a complete list. You also can simply con confirm the network connectivity from the proxy to the target server. Make sure that it can get there across the network. Other tests for less common situations uh, confirm that WMI is active and working correctly on the target server. There are cases where the WMI service could be corrupted. So in some cases, starting or restarting the WMI service on the target may be helpful. You should confirm that you are using a current version of the Discovery Windows Proxy and that there is no antivirus package that is blocking access on the proxy or on the target. OK, to further debug a WMI error, you might want to find out, is the problem within Discovery or is the problem within Windows itself? So it's good to be able to test WMI outside of Discovery. One way to do that is with the WMIC command, which can be run from a command prompt on the Windows proxy server. And there's a documentation link here for more details. We provide some examples of using the WMIC command where you're going out to a specific endpoint, you're providing credential information, and you're pointing to a Windows class like Win32 underscore physical memory to say what kind of information that you want to retrieve with the command. If you're doing this, you should always use the same domain and username 
that is used by Discovery for the scan to be able to get an even comparison. You can also execute WMIC directly on the target host, as shown below. So if the command works on the target host but fails from the proxy, it's pretty good chance that the problem is in the network being able to get from the proxy to the target host. Another way to test WMI outside of discovery is to run the WBEM test command from a command prompt on the Windows proxy server. And again, there's a doc link here with more information about doing that, but we're going to have next a demo for using WBEM test. All right, so this is a demonstration of how to use the WBEM test tool to check connectivity. And in this particular situation, we have a command prompt opened up on a Windows Discovery proxy. And we're going to test the connectivity to another Windows server. So type in WBEM test at the command line. And that pulls up this window for the WMI tester. Next thing we do is click on connect. And you'll see the default namespace here, which is root slash CIMV2. We want to leave that there. And we're going to add to that the IP address of the server that we want to try to connect to. And we're going to use that same IP address in the user field because it needs to be in domain slash user format. In this case, we're using a local administrator account. And we'll give it the password and click on connect. Right. And the fact that these selection buttons are available indicates we've got a good connection. So at this point we have verified the connectivity. Now you can use this tool for other things as well. Suppose you had a problem where you wanted to check the values that were being returned from a particular WMI query. For instance, in Discovery, in the UI, if you go to Administration and Platforms, and then go to Windows, you can see a list of the queries, the WMI queries that are being used by Discovery when scanning a Windows host. So you can use any of these. For these purposes, we're going to simply click the Query button and say select asterisk from Win32 underscore computer system, which is one of the queries that is used, and click Apply. And it shows you the result from that query. And you can further drill down into that by double clicking on it. And you can see the values for a number of the properties that have been found by this query. For instance, suppose you wanted to look at uh, DNS host name. You can see the actual DNS host name. You can see the domain value and many other properties that are available here, manufacturer, for instance. Okay. And when you're done, you just click Close, Close again, and you can exit out of this window. OK, so let's say that you have run WMIC or WBEM test to test WMI connectivity, and it has returned an error message. Usually the error messages can be somewhat cryptic, so we'll talk about some of the more common ones here. The first one is if you get this particular code that you see here and basically the description of the service cannot be started either because it's disabled or it has no enabled devices for it. And this can occur if the WMI service on the target server has been stopped. So the solution is to start or restart the WMI service on the target server. The second one, and this is a very common error message to see, is the description being the RPC server is unavailable. And what that means is that the communication is being blocked by a firewall. 
Uh, there are one or more ports that are required to do the Windows discovery that are not open, that we cannot reach. So the solution is to open those ports as documented in the link that you see at the bottom of the page. Another possible error message is the interface is unknown. This can occur if the NT Authority service is not in the administrators group or in some cases WMI components have been corrupted. So the solution would be to re-register the WMI components and add NT Authority service to the administrator group. Or again, in rare cases, you might need to restart WMI as well. Uh, the fourth message is failed to access Win32 network adapter to retrieve a batch of, adult, of results. And if you see this message, you should refer to the KA listed on the slide here for more information. Finally, and possibly the most common error message is simply access is denied. And this is usually pretty straightforward in the sense that it's saying that either the domain or the username or the password that's being used to access WMI is not correct. In that case, you can simply provide the correct login information. There are a couple of other scenarios where this could occur. Uh, number two would be if UAC is enabled, and it does have to be disabled in certain cases, and the documentation here talks about that a little further. Uh, the third possible cause of this is if the cr credential does not have the required permissions as documented in the link that you see here. And in that case, you just need to provide the correct permissions, which is usually an administrator level account. Thank you.